Hey guys, we're now going to talk about work and energy, which are two concepts that are very closely related. I'm really excited about this chapter because energy is a really big part of physics and you're going to see it come back in, in several other chapters. So it's really important that you get good at this stuff. Let's check it out. All right, so energy is a physical quantity without a precise definition. Uh, if you read through a textbook, it most likely says something um, about the, the difficulty in explaining exactly what, what energy is. And we don't know exactly what it is, and we don't know exactly why things work the way they do, um, but we know how it works, okay? We don't know exactly what it is, but we know how it works. There's a bunch of definitions, um, and they're all kind of weak. I don't really like any of them, uh, but it doesn't matter. Um, the key thing to know about energy, one of the key things to know about energy, is that it exists in many forms. There are multiple types of energies, okay? And energy also, that it cannot be destroyed um, or created. Energy cannot be destroyed or created. Um, it must always be transformed between types. It must always be transformed between types or converted one type of energy to the other. Okay, so here's a quick chart of the main types of energies that you're going to see in this class. Um, so we're going to, in, in this course, we're going to focus almost exclusively on mechanical energy, right? The first part of physics is almost exclusively mechanical energy. So, so much so that we're going to split up all the types of energies into simply mechanical and non-mechanical. Non-mechanical is technically not a category of energy. I'm just saying all the energies that are not mechanical, we're just going to bunch them up here because it doesn't matter. So you have atomic energy, chemical energy, all kinds of different things, okay? Mechanical energy has two subgroups. One is potential and the other one is kinetic, okay? Potential energy is split into two groups, gravitational and elastic energy, which can also be thought of as a spring energy. And then we also have kinetic energy. So let me write the equations for these real quick. Um, I'm skipping these two because we're going to get back to it. But gravitational potential energy is mgh, mass gravity, uh, 9.8, and then the height. And the elastic potential energy is given by half kx squared, okay? k is the spring coefficient, the force constant. Um, those are the same thing, spring coefficient and force constant. And x is your spring deformation, okay? You might already have seen this. And kinetic energy, the equation for kinetic energy is half mv squared, okay? On the non-mechanical type, I'm going to, the only one I'm going to mention that we need to sort of care about is thermal energy. And everything else just goes here. All other types of energies go here. And the reason why I'm singling out thermal energy is because one of the things you see is that static friction, when two things are rubbing on each other, that rubbing causes heat, right? It causes heat. So we're going to say that, uh, I'm sorry, kinetic friction rather. Kinetic friction is going to convert kinetic energy into thermal energy. Okay, so friction kinetic. Uh, transforms kinetic energy when you rub you are slowing down so you're losing kinetic energy and you're getting thermal energy which can also be thought of as heat okay we'll talk more about that later let's keep going so I mentioned we don't know much uh, about exactly what energy is but we know how it works and we know that it's conserved and that's the most important part about energy that's why it's such a big deal it's because it's this physical quantity that is always conserved, right? So we're going to use this idea to make old problems easier as well as to solve new ones. Let me give you a quick example over here in this white space here. Um, here's an example of a problem that we could have solved earlier, right? If you have a block and it slides down and I want to know what is the final velocity down here. You could have solved this earlier. You would write F equals MA. You'd find that the acceleration uh, of the, you would find what the acceleration of the block is, and then you would pick one of your three equations of motion to solve for the final velocity. So it's a two-step process. It's not that bad. You've done this before. But now, with energy, we're going to be able to solve this in one shot, right? Another thing is you're going to be able to solve new types of problems that you couldn't solve before. So something similar to this, but that you couldn't solve, was a curved path, something like this. So the block is here, but the path is curving. So the angle is always changing. And therefore, the acceleration isn't constant. And we can't really solve problems of variable acceleration early on. Okay? So this is an old problem that is going to be easier. And this is a new problem that we couldn't solve at all. 
In fact, whenever you have a curved path, you're always going to solve this using energy. Okay? So let's talk a little bit more about the types of energy that we care about the most, which are these over here. And kinetic energy, it's, it's, um, it's represented by Ke, kinetic energy, or simply K. It's an uppercase K. Okay? Um, it has to do with an object's velocity, or more specifically, actually speed. Okay? has to do with an object's speed. Um, look at the equation here for kinetic energy, half mv squared. An object that is moving has obviously a velocity, and if you have a velocity, you have a kinetic energy. That's it. If you have a velocity, you have a kinetic energy. And you should be able to tell which types of energy an object has. Potential energy is represented by Pe, but the most use, uh, usual one is actually U. Okay, so potential energy is U. And it has to do with an object's position. Now, there's two types of potential energy, gravitational elastic. An object that is above the ground has gravitational potential energy. Since there are two types of potential energy, we use a subscript to differentiate between them. So potential energy is U, but it's if, if it's of the type gravitational, it's UG right here. And you can see this here. If you're above the ground, you have a height. And if you have a height, your potential energy is zero. I'm sorry, not zero. But if you don't have a height, if you're on the floor, then H would be zero and the potential energy would be zero. Okay, a spring that is compressed or stretched, both of these terms could be referred to as deformed, right? A deformation is you stretching or compressing uh, a spring. So an object, a uh, spring that is deformed has elastic elastic potential energy and that's going to be u e l right here okay x is deformation if you have an x you have a new e l okay so kinetic energy requires a v elastic potential energy requires an x and gravitational potential energy requires an h okay um over here if you ever see the letter u by itself without a G or without a UL, U by itself just means UEL, let me write it the other order, UG plus UEL. So if you see U by itself, it means both U's, it's just a shortcut, simpler version, compressed version of writing it, okay? Mechanical energy over here, right? Mechanical energy encompasses all these three, and to calculate the mechanical energy of an object, it's, you're simply going to sum, it's going to be the sum of kinetic and potential energy. So you would compute mgh, half kx squared, half mv squared, add up all three of them. Okay? And lastly, the unit that you use, that we're going to use for energy, the official SI unit for energy, is joules. And it's abbreviated J. All right? Let's do a very quick example here. I have example one, a three kilogram bird flies horizontally at 20 meters above the ground with 10 meters per second. Three kilogram bird flying at a height of 20 meters. And it's flying horizontally, so it looks like this, with 10 meters per second. I want to calculate its total mechanical energy. Well, how do I find mechanical energy? Mechanical energy is K plus U. Okay, let me write this up here. I don't think I wrote that there. Kinetic energy right here, it's the total K, which is this guy, um, plus U, and U is both of these together. So, if you want, you can expand this. It's K plus UG plus UEL. How do you know which types of energies you have? Well, this one depends on a V, this one depends on an H, and this one depends on a spring compression, X. There are no springs around, so I don't have this. Um, I have a velocity, so I have a kinetic energy. I have a height, so I have a potential energy. And now it's just plug and chug, right? So half mv squared plus mgh. Half the mass is 3. The velocity is 10 squared plus m3. For gravity, I'm going to use 10 just to make it faster. Okay, but it's 9.8, right? Um, and then H is 20. And if you add up all of this, you get 750 joules. And that's it. Just plug and you're done.
Okay, let's do this next one here. 